Welcome to the North American Challenger Series, brought to you thanks in part by our friends at Coca-Cola. I'm David Freak Turley, and I'd like to welcome Aiden Zyrene Moon to the desk, but I'd, I'd love to welcome you to the desk. <laughs> oh, th thanks, man. Uh, just I never get to welcome you. Would you yeah. like to? Would you like to try? Guys, it's the lovely David Freak Turley alongside me here today. Look at look at that. Look at that. It's so glorious. It's a good partnership. <laughs> Guys, we're kicking out the final week of the North American Spring Challenger Series with a best of three matchup between VVV Gaming and Curse Academy. And tomorrow, we head to the championship match between LMQ and Cloud9 Tempest. So that's the bracket on the screen, but as we know in Challenger, it's more than the bracket, it's the points that pay. Placing higher in the series means more points and a better seed heading into the playoffs. So let's crunch some numbers. In the top half of the standing, it's actually already set in stone. Both of the buys are accounted for. LMQ owns first seed uncontested, and the same for Cloud9 Tempest in second. Yeah, and the same goes for Complexity Black, minus the buy, languishing in third with nine points. But it's an all-out battle for the lower seeds. The winner of tonight's matchup banks fourth place, leaving the remaining team in a tiebreaker with Complexity Red for fifth and sixth. And that is a Complexity Red that's now Golden Glueless. Yeah. Like you saw him perform well on Dignitas. Good player. Going to see how well they do with the uh, replacement Fragnatic. And of course, today you can always follow the Challenger action by going to lolesports.com. It's as simple as that, and you'll find stats, scores, and schedules, and more under the Leagues and Tournaments tab near the top of the page. So now let's take a closer look at today's best of three between VVV Gaming and Curse Academy. Now, last time we laid eyes on VVV, they were toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Titans that are LMQ. They got 2-0 in the semifinal, and they're going to be back at it today, looking to school Curse Academy. That would claim them third place in the second spring series. And Yeah, that's absolutely right. And they are going to need Pekinwolf to come out on top in his face-off today against Duosec. Curse Academy mid laner went 3-0-7 on Ziggs in their elimination game against Cloud9 Tempest. And Pekin Wolf's numbers were impressive in the quarterfinals. He also had a killer game on Ziggs, going 6-0 and 4 in a must-win game 3 over LolPro. But he only finished with a .75 KDA versus LMQ in the semis. And to be fair, he was shut down by Xiao Wei Xiao, who put on a clinic in that matchup. Yeah. But Pekin Wolf isn't the only one expected to bring the thunder in a tough head-to-head. -to -head. Chris is going to have to contain Rux and not get bullied in the top lane. Both these guys are former pros, and he's going to have to keep, keep his team right on track and school Curse Academy. Mm -hmm. So, very, very wild card top lane up there. It really is. Yeah, both High aggressive players, tend to be squishy, yeah. fighting a lot. I'm looking good, forward to that. Good place to be. Yeah, and especially... VVV. They also announced they had a roster change at support. Normalize will be starting today in place of Gonti. And on the flip side of that, Curse Academy is also bringing Cabigon in mm -hmm. as a support over K1 Pro. And Cabigon's actually Japanese for Snorlax. It's awesome. It, it trolled me too because it looked like a French word and, and he's a French Canadian player. It's but true. It's Japanese. Looked like it, but it's not. Yeah. And for those of you who aren't familiar with him, his name is Diamond on the live servers. Yeah. He's been around a very long time. Yeah. But it's a bold move by both of these teams to start shaking up their rosters so close to playoffs and they're mm -hmm. fighting for seeding now. So. Yeah, it's the last chance these guys to really make some turns. We actually saw some, well, we will see some roster changes in EU as well when we get to the matches uh, in a couple of weeks. So, of course, uh, taken to the rift on the red side is Curse Academy, and just like their LCS counterpart, they're going to be trying hard to avoid the forever fourth moniker here today with a win. And as I was just saying, keep your eyes on Rux. He could be the deciding factor for Curse Academy. He went 9, 4, and 7 on Aatrox in the semifinals with zero deaths in game two. He has one of the top KDAs in this series. Mm -hmm. So look out for him. Also look out for him up against Chris. Don't know what they're going to play. Don't know how they're going to play either. So, But the whole team actually performed really well in that matchup against a tough Tempest team. Like Pat in the jungle. He could very well be that rumble that they need over VVV's Get Snuggled, who has been struggling a bit. Pat's had an impressive Challenger series this spring with wicked numbers on both Lee Sin and Elise. And of course, there is always Mash, who let his lady do all of the talking against Cloud9 Tempest. What a general one. Right? Yeah, he finished the series 6-1 and 11 as Sivir. Which, of course, this leads up to our featured matchup of the day. Let's take a look at the two ADCs making the headlines this series, VVV's Tails and Curse Academy's Don't Mash Me. And Tails is coming off a rough one versus LMQ with a .64 KDA in the semis. But prior to last week's matchup, he had a sick 11.2 across five games. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side of that, there's Don't Mash Me, the former LCS player for AD Carry on Team Coast. He is 21-5 and 32 in Series 2 with a 10.6 KDA overall. And this is very important because Mash Me went 10-3 and 15 in three games versus Cloud9 Tempest, two of which were losses. Yeah. So in his two losses, he had an 8 KDA. He went yeah. 3-0-5 on Sivir in that first game, mm -hmm. not dying. 
So if you looked up yeah. the scores, you would have been like, this team won, right? No. Nope. So. He puts up puts up cop like numbers. Where yeah. He's he's very good at not dying. He does put out good damage in fights overall. It's but. pretty much the definition of consistency is an mm -hmm. eighty carry. If you get kills and you don't die and you're CSing well, it's really your team that's just falling around you and just dying in those team fights. And you're like, yeah. well, I'm gonna back up to the Nexus. I'm gonna have to let it go because I'm the only one left alive. Yeah. So. And I don't think you can like take blame if you have a zero death loss. It's like, well, dying at the end wouldn't have helped anyway. Like I feel like that's not a fair criticism of an AD yeah. carry. No, absolutely. You don't have to die to lose. He's relevant in the team fights too. Mm -hmm. So these guys have a lot on the line because loser of this plays complexity red. And Curse Academy already two owed complexity red though. So they could have yeah. a repeat performance if they do lose this and drop down there. But the loser of that matchup ends up in sixth place against Complexity Black. Yeah. So this is basically a repeat of what happened in Europe, mm -hmm. where we have a tiebreaker for fifth, sixth. Loser of that's going to have to face a very strong team. Right. And like Complexity Black, the thing is, like, they're the third seeded team, but think about the teams they lost to. They lost to LMQ in fairly close games, actually, in the first Challenger Spring Series finals. And you look at them and you're like, all right, it's pretty good performance. Their other loss was actually a forfeit loss to Cloud9 Tempest, I believe, if I yes. have my team correctly. It was forfeit loss semifinals or quarterfinals. Um, and again, you, if, if those are the only ways that team has lost, it's like, even though we haven't seen Complexity Black play in a while, they're obviously a very, very strong team. And it is a, it's a seed you do want to avoid. They're very strong. And we did see Robert X. Lee the other day mm -hmm. on EG in the past week. And he still put up good numbers. I actually think out of all the substitutes, he was the most consistent yeah. on that stage. Really didn't seem to have a lot of nerves. And he's played there before versus LMQ on that mm -hmm. stage. So not unfamiliar with it. And he will be back for playoffs if they make it past their first round, which, you know, with these two teams here, is actually quite a gamble. Yeah, honestly. And, and so there's a lot of individual skill here. And I kind of like talking about the individual players there and kind of following them because we just got to see one of the success stories. Golden Glue coming out of Complexity Red, playing for Dignitas, 8-3-8 eight, and eight on Zed in his first game. And he's playing up, you know, against some tough competition, but made it still work there. Uh, what against EG against Pobelter, who's another, like, great first-year pro there and has had a pretty decent season. And all these rosters are full of these types of players who are, like, right there, like, top solo queue are about to, like, bust in. Yeah, I think Golden Glue actually stole Meteos' Super Saiyan powers. Yeah. You can only be one super blonde person in the LCS at a time. Meteos lost his when he went to IEM, and now... That's where it ended up in Golden Glue's hands. Now in Golden Glue. Yeah. Do you think he's named his he named himself that because of his hair? Golden hair, Golden Glue. I feel like there was some kind of influence there. Mm. I think it's likely, personally. So why is Ball's names? Oh, I'm kidding. Wow. Anyway, anyway, moving on away from that, we want to talk about the players in this game mm -hmm. here. Rux versus Chris in the top lane. Yeah. Rux and Chris are both pretty much the definition of wild card here. Yeah. They will either carry your game all the way through, or they will be the person that needs carrying. True. It's the flip side of it. It's like, oh my god, Rux is going ham so much on Renekton and Aatrox that he's right. buying Trinity Force and just and carrying closing the it out really fast. Exactly. Closing the game out incredibly quickly. Or it's kind of like, well, I'm really behind. I'm losing my lane. Mm -hmm. When you put two of those up against each other... I don't know what's going to happen. Is it just going to be huge extremes? Are they both going to go at each other enough that they're even? Yeah. Over and over again. It's like, I killed you, and then I come back to lane. I killed you, and then it just goes back and forth. I think that's actually pretty likely. I, I think <laughs> they're they're going to be fighting a lot. I mean, these guys are playing fairly aggressive champions. Jace, we saw that from Chris. Uh, Chris had a 1-0-0 Jace game, actually, which that was hilarious in, in their loss to LMQ because he didn't get any jungle attention, yeah. really, so he just kind of sat there slowly losing his lane to, to Ackerman and then never died and and so every once in a while they can play the defensive enough game but i think they're also likely to pull a lot of jungle attention i think it's pretty likely and so we'll see get snuggled and pat get over there and try to tip the match in one way so that they can kind of win the lane out yeah, there's so much on the map to consider though both these ad carries are very very good match yeah. me even in their losses is extremely consistent tails on the other hand didn't hold up very well against Vasili. that i believe that was our featured matchup going into that one too yeah and it was rough yeah it was pretty rough on Tails. It had a game where he went 1-7-4 and four on Lucian, and the other one was a 0-4-2 and two on Caitlyn. Yeah. Like, we saw a sub-1 KDA. So it wasn't even going even, just yeah. basically. When it gets LMQ, mm -hmm. if you lose your lane, that lane's going to fall into other lanes, so it's kind of just a huge snowball that they take advantage yeah. of. Yeah. So we'll be seeing them in the finals, but right now, third, fourth place. We'll see what the fans end up being. Pantheon, Evelyn, and Shivana all removed from Curse Academy. Rux is Shivana. I'm not surprised to see that ban. Chris likes the squishier champions here. Jace is available in the pool. Lulu zigs needily, banned away from BBV. Why not remove Peek and Wolf's Nid? Yeah, why not? You want to get rid of those champions for him. That's typically the strategy of VVV, is to use some type of poke from
from Peek and Wolf, whether it's a Gragas, could be a Ziggs, could be a Nidalee. So those are removed, and now they're definitely taking their time with this. What do they want to get? They want to pick up a jungler first, maybe Kha'Zix, who's just been first pick worthy over and over again. Exactly. And, ooh, okay. So Renekton comes through here. Kha'Zix actually is still allowed through the pool right now. Um, that is a good champion for Chris. He does like to play aggressively, though it's it's kind of on his on the lower end of his most plays there. It's not the thing you you initially think of when you see Chris, right? Yeah. You think of Riven, you think of even top Elise, although in 4.4, I think you wouldn't see it anymore there. Um, and even the Jace removed is like not picked as well. Yeah, and this really puts Rux onto a couple things. Aatrox is actually disabled, mm -hmm. so he can no longer pick that. Shivana's gone. He's left to, he does have kind of an unorthodox champion pool in his B list. He's yeah. played Cannon, he's played Trindamir. Yep. He's actually played some top lane LeBlanc too, which we've seen in the EU LCS, but we haven't seen it work too well. Fnatic tried to use it and it didn't work out. Yeah. But we'll have to see what Rux ends up taking. And they lock in a lease in, but it's, I assume that's for Pat, because you would just Most put, likely. You would put it on Rux if you were going to pick it for him. But Pat, he well, did have my games. Yeah. Well, Pat did have killer games with Lee Sin. Though. Yeah, he did. In in the past, and Lee Sin and Elise have been his go-to for the most part. He does play some Kha'Zix, but I like the Lee Sin pick here. Yeah. Saw it today from Dexter in the NAL. Great. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a champion that is just very consistent. Has a lot that to his kit. And if you're a high-level player, Lee Sin just has a huge amount of skill cap on him. Yeah. Basically, an invisible ceiling. Just, you just keep going. And you're just like, I don't even know where this is. It doesn't. I end. mean, Lee Sin the blind monk shouldn't be able to see the ceiling. It's true. <laughs> You know, I'm so good because I don't know where the ceiling is. Yep. Keeps going up, never hits his head. He's good to go on this one. Uh, next couple of picks to come through, though, is going to be for VVV. They look at Caitlyn as well as LeBlanc here. Give me the pickup. So these guys are actually trading. They're trading lanes back and forth, basically. They're saying, okay, you know, first pick Renekton. Okay, fine, we took that champion. On the other side, though, they're rushing for contested picks more so than they're actually rushing for, like, counter picks, right? Is they're like, okay, but but right now, actually, Annie's available. Let's grab that real quick. Take that for ourselves. And on the side, LeBlanc's available still. Let's grab that for ourselves. Yeah. So they're rushing important parts of their comps out. Yeah, and Pekin Wolf has played LeBlanc previously. I believe he had the same amount of kills as he did deaths, but mm -hmm. they still ended up winning that game. Yeah. So kind of a very aggressive player with that. Might go in and get CC'd a bit. Yeah. Especially with somebody like Annie. Exactly. Go right in straight onto a Tivers and, oh. Long, yeah. Extremely squishy, extremely vulnerable to just being taken out in the CCs. Oof. Yeah. And just so you guys know, uh, we've paused champs like it will come back in a second. So don't worry. Those picks are still coming through. I believe we're just going to resume them in a, in a second here. So uh, from what we've seen so far, a uh, total of what? Five champs have been picked. So we're halfway through right there. We know it's Annie plus X. I don't know if Caitlyn actually got locked in Caitlin yet. Caitlyn did get locked in over on the side of VVV. So Tails okay. is going to be playing that. Yeah. Uh, he's only played... Ezreal, Lucian, and Caitlyn out of all of their games. Mm -hmm. And ops not to go for the Ezreal or the Lucian. He didn't have a great performance on that either. But his Caitlyn, looking to just go with the lane and up against somebody like Annie, it is a good pick. Because mm -hmm. you can harass her from a distance, from yeah. auto attack range. 575 now. Yep. Nerf to Zyra status, only amazing instead of ridiculous. <laughs> it's still really good. Yeah. I was like, what, what champions have 575? I'm like, Zyra. Varus, Zyra, Ziggs. Yep, I think there's Those are the ones probably somewhere el someone else like sneaky in there. I know like Cog's rank one W is like close ish to that mark. Yeah, he's got but, like 500 base. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 short range base of this one, um, and so kind of thinking about it, right? So nice, nice, safe backline guy. Pick and Wolf will see. He drew two bands, Lulu and Needly band away from him. Took LeBlanc, who's another sort of consistent mid laner that we see. Um, and I think depending on the matchup, he can choose to all in his opponent and choose to pull in some jungle ganks as well. But he can also just kind of wave clear forever and wait around and make moves later on. And I kind of want to see then how the team plays around this. Because in Europe, for example, ninjas in pajamas play a very sort of slow and reserved game. They take a good long time before they put anything out. Um, and, and, you know, we could see that gameplay come out as well. I know kind of looking at Curse Academy's matches, actually, in their semifinal, they played the early game so well. I remember actually costing these games with you saying, I love Curse Academy's first six minutes. Yeah. And then they stopped finding things to do afterwards. Yeah, it was really confusing. I liked the shot calling in the early game. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they did have K1 Pro, though, who ended up having a 1.43 KDA across their games, yeah. whereas Mashmi in their losses had an 8 KDA. So the team was racking up kills, it just K1 Pro was not a part of them, and now they have Kabigon in there, basically subbing in. Yep. And now... Ooh, okay.
Okay, okay. So okay. so Rise okay. picked up here for probably the top lane, though it yeah. could be duo sec. Um, I assume it's for the top lane, but it could go mid. Yes. For multiple reasons right now. Rise does well against both of these champions because LeBlanc distortions in, you root her with the rune prison, and she can't go back. And Renekton is very susceptible to the harass from the overload in the very early parts of the game. Mm -hmm. So that's actually a great champion in either of those lanes. And he's basically saying, yeah, we're going to see all of your lanes and what you're bringing to the table before we pick that. So it's a flex pick that works very well for Duosec and Rox. And we'll see if they want to pick a certain matchup later on. I know we do like Rise versus Renekton in general. It seems to go well for the Rise, but we can always see in the jungle when the ganks come in. Kha'Zix picked up there. Fork gets snuggled in the jungle. Maybe gonna see Thresh here for Normalize as well. One of the strongest lanes I think I can think of. In a 2v2 matchup, Thresh, Caitlyn should have a pretty good start to the game. We'll see if they can keep down matches Lucian. Lucian, Annie, a lot of early game harassment there. A lot of chunking potential. Once mm -hmm. you land the stun, you are going to follow up with your passive. And you can get actually two parts of your passive off if you just do a full spell sling there. It's true. And Kha'Zix being put as a fourth pick here in terms of rotation. It's something we don't typically see, especially yeah. since he's extremely powerful right now. Well, yeah, and that was surprising to me that VVV Rush picked the Renekton. We've seen that once in a while, early Renekton picks, they really, really want to win the lane. They think it's super contested there. And with the Shivana ban, I can see it. Um, but yeah, with Lee Sin picked up here for Pat, they said, okay, we know we can get Kha'Zix whenever we want. So they waited on it for a while. Kale does come through for the mid lane here for Duo Sex. So TP rise in the top lane and Kale mid Bristle Block. I like Curse Academy's composition more right now mm -hmm. because they have just taken it very slowly. VVV Gaming showed a lot of their cards early. Renekton. Yeah. Then they get LeBlanc. They don't even know what Curse Academy is bringing to the table. Boom, rise. And then they last pick the Kale. Kale does really well against Kha'Zix and LeBlanc. Mm -hmm. The intervention is fantastic. Rise does well against all three of those champions in the solo lanes, including the jungle of VVV Gaming. And he'll get tanky, too. So, overall, I do like what Curse Academy has brought to the table. Yeah. But on the flip side, VVV, I like their bottom lane just a little bit more. Yeah, I do, too. And it's surprising to me because most of the elements of Curse Academy's bot lane got picked early. They rush-picked the Annie and said, okay, that's fine, we'll grab that. Waited for their next rotation to grab Lucian. And it feels like... You know, Curse Academy got sort of first dibs on a bot lane, and they're still fighting Kate Thrash, one of the strongest bot lanes in a 2v2 sort of setting. And that said, though, they got counterpicks everywhere else, so I understand, like, sometimes you're going to kind of fall away there. But, again, they had the option just to pick Caitlyn, the option just to pick Thrash early on. So I do want to see if that pays off, if if they have a better plan for what Andy's going to do, a better plan for what Mash Me's Lucian's going to do. Yeah, and VVV, they look like they entered the game with a plan, what they wanted from Champion Select, because they have a very good pick composition here. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that Curse Academy just said, we don't have a basic thing set in stone. We want to see what you bring to the table and then counter that. So it's a pick comp versus a very durable composition here that has been brought to the table by Curse Academy. Intervention from Kale. You're going to have a very tanky rise in the late game, and he can go wherever he wants with the teleport. Not going to have a lot of lane kill potential. Mm -hmm. But Ryze himself actually does, even without the Ignite. He just roots you up. His spells are on such a low cooldown. Then he has the chase with his ultimate. And you typically bring some move speed quintessences too and go full utility. Yeah, I'm actually curious because I know there's a lot of really cool ways to build Ryze. And I never like found like the one way that everyone plays it. But you can you can run, for example, like mana glyphs. People bring some type of mana inside of their uh, typically their runes. And especially since he's up against a Renekton, he won't need mm -hmm. magic resist. So yeah. he might have a page set aside for that where his blues are actually for mana. Typically do. Yeah. I mean if if especially in a tournament realm setting where you know you're just just going to play top lane, it's like I don't need the AD carry page waiting in the wings. I'm gonna just have all my matchups planned out. Like in the LCS, I've looked at the rune pages. I've seen guys have as many as 12 AD carry rune pages. That they're like, well, look, if it's a really, really AD carry, really. If it's a really abusive matchup like um, Urgot, they have like armor glyphs, armor quints. They'd be like, okay. just to not lose lane, I will run 30 bonus armor in my rune page. Wow. I don't know if they actually do it. I just know the page exists on some of their on their rune page. Normalize. Go back. Go get your trinket. Wow. Rux, you too. Rux, what? That's. They don't need it there for the first go. two minutes anyway. <laughs> Wards true. are useless right now. Yeah. You know what's funny now is now the cooldown timers are going to like kind of desync. They'll end yeah. it two minutes anyway, but they're going to be in like... The angles are different. If they were clocks, they'd be asynchronous. They'd get there, though. They'd get it there at the same time. Rux, on the other hand... Hmm. 
There's no reason to not buy the trinket early on. No, there is no reason. So long as I have my wings, <laughs> That's just probably just rushing out there. He did bring full utility. He's also got the bonus gold no. yeah. in his mastery. So he brought the extra movement speed inside of his kit. You can see he's sitting at 377 yeah. already at level 1. So I'm assuming he also has movement speed contestances. And he has some mana because that 636 yeah. is about 130 more than Rise starts. Yeah. He's got plenty there. Did you see if he had AP in, in the little... Like on seven, that's I think that's standard for nine offense. Yeah, that's nine offense standard. So potentially nine o twenty one or like nine five fourteen something like so you that. Get sixth and one per level. Yeah, yeah. So okay, we've managed to deduce Rux's Boom. rune page. Six zero twenty one. There you go. Come at me, Rux. He actually went Six. back and got it too. There you go. Ward trinket is there. He's gonna be all right. Everyone's gonna be nice and happy. Oh, Duosec doesn't see this. I Minute mean, at the end of the game, Duosec does not see the invade. But on the flip side, both top laners are now in a two v one situation. And the reds are getting invaded from either. Okay, so going to be a nice easy trade of buffs. VVV going to send their dual lane up to the top, and Rux is going to be in for a rude surprise when he realizes he won't get any last hits for like five minutes this game. Gets snuck with level two, has the claws level one. He actually waits on a second point in case he needed to leap away if he got caught. Otherwise, he could just learn W. And he'd it's always fine. smart. Yeah, I like that a lot, saving skills. I've been like level four and like still had a point waiting. Oh, just because I'm like, in case I need my escape. Yep. Just always, and then you put it in W, and you're like, no! Ah, oh, somebody around the corner. Yeah. Now I gotta jump. He can wolf level two right now. Duos that got to lane first and got level two second. It's kind of weird, but he's going in. Does not find much of a trade. He actually learned his heal at level two, so no burst potential for a while, actually. Yeah. You see, Get Snuggle actually doesn't clear another camp. He goes straight for his blue, so he won't hit level three off of this. It's gonna take him a little bit. And on the flip side, though, Pat, he is gonna get three off this camp. Mm -hmm. So a small, uh, very small, but existent uh, experience yeah. advantage here. And Pat already make his way down to the bottom side for, it looks like, maybe a 3v1 turret dive. Yeah. 3v1 turret dive is typically what you do in 2v1 situations. You will push that turret, then you will go rotate Dragon, especially since Curse Academy are now in this situation to do so. And we always talk about their early game. The first six minutes are on point, and we might see that happen here again. Let's see what kind of lead they can build for themselves. Curse Academy do push out the wave. Pat gets it with the red buff tick, and now Chris is level two. Ooh, the Q lands. Gonna force him to run away from this one, so XP has been denied. I wanna see top lane here. Rux is gonna get pushed away by get snuggled. And actually he's only level one here, so gotta say props to Chris for leeching experience much better so far. Yeah, I was about to say, level one level having having the level two in a three V one yeah. is huge. Because Rux was level one, and it's always just those tiny little silver linings. Basically you're like, oh they have nine levels over me combined. Mm-hmm. But at least I'm level two now. There you go. At least I have more HP. At least I'm able to be a little more durable. And now the question is, is Curse Academy going to go straight for the dragon? They're going to push another one here. And that turret went down very quickly because it doesn't have the bonus resistances on it because it's the bottom turret. Only top and mid have those first eight minutes. True. So here we go for turret number two. These ones don't have any kind of bonuses. Curse Academy is still happy to push right there. But Chris, no longer in danger of being pushed away. He's actually going to go in for a bit of a trade. Get some damage, is gaining experience. Meanwhile, the dual lane of VVV has recalled. They'll be here to defend this very soon. Curse Academy won't get much more off his turret health. And Rux is up in the top lane. He's going to be able to farm up and just get that CS for himself. And now Chris, on the other hand, he wants to engage. Oh, but good dash away by Mashmi. Chris stunned as well. And you know I like VVV's choice right here because instead of trading two turrets, and normally when you see this, right, you see the three on ones, both teams trade two turrets, and then the team on the bottom side of the map takes a dragon. VVV sacrificed some turret health, but not the turret, and showed up in time to stop a dragon attempt. Oh. Get Snuggles walked into that. Oh! Wow, Curse Academy, first six minutes. There it is. Five minute first blood. Amazing play. Smite off the field, too. So now they can go ahead and rotate to the dragon if they want to, and Rux has TP. Mm hmm. Well, look at this. Yeah, Rux has TP. The mid lane's got the push lead. Mash B, Cabagon. Oh, actually no. still looking for more damage. The flay back, the slow there on a normalize. I'm actually, you're right though, you call Dragon, I don't know why they're not going for it. They could. They could absolutely Dragon right now. It's a very early Dragon still. They might say, we already have control of this area. Let's not take it off the map, let's let it just get some more gold so it's worth more. And Curse Academy already have a 1,000 gold lead. So they're in a good situation. First Blood, Tower's all good. I don't know man, the first rule of money is get more money. <laughs> first rule of money. Have uh, your money work for you. And then the next thing is don't get it taxed, and that's how you stay rich. There you go. Curse Academy looking into offshore accounts right now. See if they can do it. Get Snuggle puts the ward down and says, ha, 
Dragon's alive, that's nice for me. Peek and Wolf in the trade with Duosec, forced to flash? Peek and Wolf chose to fight. Why? Peek and Wolf's LeBlanc is not his fort at all. True. He loves the Nidalee, he loves the Ziggs, his all-in, don't know how much he's actually adjusted to that, because it's a completely different playstyle than Poke. True. Now in the bottom though, oh, the oh, hook gets knuckles off on the side. What a on the Kavagun, the fly on both as well. Kate Trap comes down. Nice double stun. Here comes a TP in from Rux. Can they turn it around? Mashby shows up. So does Lee Sin. Pillar Vether comes by the jump in on the Gets oh, Snuggle. Flash back. away from Rux. Look at the damage. Gets Snuggle picks up one, picks up two. What a play. Pat forced to run away. They're going to trade one back onto Kha'Zix. But man, VVV turning that one nicely. Rux flashed onto a trap and They're locked going. himself up. But oh, Tails, can you get to the lantern? Wow, VVV with the plays. So a normalized was a good pickup. <laughs> yeah, that worked. <laughs> the attention that he was paying to everybody in that fight. He's so he's so low. He's extremely low, but he stuck around because he knew what was going to happen. Just having that presence of mind just thresh. No, this isn't the time to back up. My team still needs me. Yeah, you know what's cool about that too is is. Thresh has both really aggressive and really defensive patterns. Mm -hmm. Like, if someone goes for a gank, you can either go in and fight that guy or run back and land your teammate out. And I feel like in both situations, Normalize, like, made the right choice and switched modes partway through. Yeah. That's one of those things I remember Bubba Dub, it was always, his lanterns are really good, mm -hmm. but his hooks, on the other hand, mm. his offensive play was a little lacking. But he actually used to have more offensive play, and then he kind of swapped it over. Sure. This is one of those things that actually made me realize it, that the best fresh players, the one who can go between both, mm -hmm. very fluid. Yeah. You don't notice it. Oh, impressive stuff either way by Normalize. Doing some good early stuff. Cabagon, Snorlax. Wrong champion to emulate Snorlax, though. Until Tibbers comes out. That's true. Snorlax, Tibbers. Mm -hmm. I feel like Gragas would be the best pickup there. Most similar to Snorlax champion. Mash be gonna kill away a pink ward. Gonna remove that one. Of course they know. VVV knows there's one there for Curse Academy as well. Dragon got attacked a little bit. And Curse Academy's sticking around. VVV coming down to contest though. Peek and Wolf level seven. Early Chalice here going for the Athenes build. And here's the thing, is that VVV is pretty much caught up in gold. And if they get this pink ward out, it's gonna be difficult. Oh, some damage comes through. Lantern comes across though. Do a second. Gonna push him away. Flash. Or sorry, the oh. jump comes off. Peek and Wolf though. Over extends. Not in a good spot. Pat picks up the kill. Flash from Duosec, not quite required though. Kill, he does help keep his team alive, and now the push in towards Dragon with the mid laner dead. Again, Peek and Wolf's main champions aren't these all in, they're the poke type champions. Yeah. And actually, I misspoke during champ select, but uh, Ziggs was also banned away. Three yeah, so mid lane bans, the big three pokers. They targeted Peek and Wolf. They clearly did. And it's working right now. Like his play style, you can definitely see he's not as comfortable on that champion. Mm hmm. Especially up against somebody like Kale. Oh, well, they get the hook on a match. Looks for the attempt, the hook on a match. Good damage across. Barrier's on, but he's going to go down. Kill picked up there. Again for Get Snuggle. 3, 2, and 0 on that guy. Q comes out towards Chris. No teleport for Rux, meaning this is now a 4 versus 3. And the blue team does slay Dragon. VVV bringing themselves back. Tied game. That was the best target to actually get the hook on there out of everybody. Mash me is the one you want to take out. He is so consistent in his AD carry play. And if you can keep him down, you will accomplish something that was not accomplished by Cloud9 Tempest. So even in their losses, Mash Beam was fine. But now. Absolutely. Pushing him down 46 to 64 minions among these AD carries. Definitely a bit of a difference right there. Small 300 goal lead for BVV. Keep a track of that one for now. Here comes Mash Beam to last under turret. Shouldn't be too hard. It's going to be all right. Yeah, Cabagon gets it. There you go. <laughs> Gotta kill his minions off. See, Mashby screwed himself up. He's he's proccing the uh, the passive, and if your first attack's going to kill a minion, you'll shoot your second bullet somewhere else. And he's ruining his own, his own CS by doing that. I like when they introduced that change. It was a good change. It was really good. Um, something else I want to touch on here is that the gold has pretty much been equalized, even though the scores are the same, mm -hmm. because of the gold generation item that's on normalized. Whereas Capagon does not have one, so it's been pulling work. It's been pulling that CS that's all around in an advantage for Curse Academy aside from that bot lane. So the gold is doing what it needs to do, that gold generation item. And up in the top lane, we do see Chris has actually gone for the Hex Drinker as opposed to a tanky defensive item. So he's looking to be offensive under Rux, but also we do see Lee Sin off on the side. Ooh, good dash. So he's going to build some MR versus this double AP comp. Mm -hmm. And then probably still go like Sunfire and a Spirit Visage too. Yeah, and something or else here too is Kale has that persistent damage, but so does Rise. 
True. And Kale will also shred your resistances to help Rise out. And Rise typically doesn't build a magic penetration item until about four. You get your tier, you get your Roa going, then you'll build something along the lines of Spirit Visage or Glacial Shroud into a frozen heart. So there's three items right there. And mm -hmm. then you build Void Staff. Well, we'll see how long this game goes, if we can even pick any of it up, or if MR will shut him down here. And look at this one. Still having Get Snuggled waiting in the wings, did evolve the ultimate first, standard, for a jungler Kha'Zix. Pat off on the other side, though. Just gonna cue the wolves jump over. Rather do special right now, normalizing Tails, also waiting for a play here. Ooh, nice by Mashmi. Spots him out. There you go. It's the right move. The Pink Wards, Battle of the Wards. We're seeing a lot of Pink Wards this game, I gotta say. A lot of them have gone down already. I feel like this is one of the highest ward death games. Um, Rux is TPing down bottom ooh. behind them. It's a four on two. This is gonna be nice to play on the Pat. The box comes down. There's Tails off on the side. Hook's not gonna land on a much. Tails done a half HP pop barrier. Rux will look for oh Morgoth because the lantern comes by and Tails gets out for now. What else can happen? The flash from Normalize. Rux trying to get his W back in. It's gonna be prison. right now. Rune Prison in, the Chain Warden gets prisoned up and he goes down. That's still a really good trade for VVV in the overall. They get the top turret, they only lose one, and they get rid of Rux in the top lane, so he's not gaining experience right now. That was actually pretty big for VVV. Yeah, I mean, they're holding completely equal in gold right now, despite losing a kill down there. Peek and Wolf, though, is still having a rough time with this one. Like, we talked about him in the early game, but right now it's actually... I mean, I gotta say, normalize and get snuggled holding the team in the game right now. Dunasek could actually turn this around and kill Deacon Wolf if he doesn't get silenced. Uh uh, his ulti already down, just gets exploded right there. Chris making the roam happen, and there you go. Part two of top lane being left alone. Chris doing something with that. Yeah, I like how he roamed down. Most top laners will sit in their top lane and try to farm. But with Renekton, after you take that tier one turret, tier two turret even, just go all through the jungle, tax it, come mid lane. It's something we see SK Telecom T1K do all the time that top lane. Just come mid and hey, look, Faker's got two people on one now. There you go. Successfully done right here by these guys. Chris trying to defend the mid lane, but that one is taking some damage. 600 gold lead for VVV. And even though Chris is making moves, I gotta say Rux is last hitting very successfully. We said this matchup was gonna be pretty volatile in the early game, and Rux is kind of opting out of even fighting Chris. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna get my gold, I'm gonna be Rise, I'm gonna stack up, but I'm gonna go elsewhere for my fighting quota. And I like that, because Wolf. Spotted. the scaling of Rise is just incredible. Like, I, I th I've said it before when we saw Rise. When you hear Late Game Champion, you're like, oh, Vayne Rise. Mm -hmm. That's what comes to mind. And Snuggle. Actually, Cloak came over the wall. So Good damage saw from Rux, so he's got to be careful. Peek and Wolf coming by as well. Snuggle will have three more slows to come in. Here comes Pat for the turnaround. Can he get it? Rux jumps. Over the wall, oh but there God. comes the flash engage from Snuggled. Kill comes up. Do a second on the other side, though. Snuggled's got nowhere to go. The Q lands on the wolf. Now out of range. No Lee Sin showing up there. One for one, though. These guys bloodthirsty. Yeah. Do a like actually had flash, decides not to flash over the wall and go for the kill. People could have just jumped back. I like that. Another pink ward death. All the time, man. People for the ethical treatment of wards have got to be crying about this game. Not as catchy of an acronym. I was trying to think of what the acronym would actually be. Petwar. Petwar. Yeah, see, not good. Not catchy at all. Not gonna happen. They're, they're never gonna go anywhere. Wards are gonna keep dying. People applaud when wards die. Clearly, yeah. there's no public support for this. There was a lot today. Yeah? It's like the gladiator games in the world. They started calling out where they were gonna put them down, too. That was great. Wow, so they actually turned this on to the gank here. Now the kick off towards Don't Mash Me. The flag gonna hit on the two though. Good damage coming across, but Mash Me. Oh, here comes Beacon. kill on Normalize. Here comes Beacon Wolf. Can he turn one around? Finds Mash Me. He's gonna find Pat not landing it. Tail's gonna get that kill though. Now Kabagon here with Rux. Rux everywhere on the map. Finds another kill for the team. Beacon Wolf in the back lines, but here comes Renekton from Chris as well. Duo Sex shows on top of that one. Kill goes with Kabagon. Still more battle going in. The Roots on the Duo Sex. Flash away from Kill gonna keep him safe. Bloodbath in this game. Three for two. Of the Three for two, though, to VVP. Inter intervention went on to Rux, mm -hmm. not Kabugans. So oh. Just getting picked up there. Yep. They were right on top of each other. It's like, which one is he going to Ruthless Predator? The guy without the big yellow bubble on yep. top. That would Why be we chosen. the best answer. Correct. There we go. Chris choosing good answers so far in this game. Spectre's Cowl picked up as well. Really knows who his opponents are. Mashmi apparently not a consideration right now for the young crocodile. Chris is with the MR. 
I like how both of the new supports for these teams have the exact same score aside from CS. And like almost the same items too. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just clone the same guy and goes, here, each of you can have a sub. Mm -hmm. But they're both playing really well. They I are. Think. Like, I, I don't normalize just died right there in that fight before accomplishing too much, but like, they've been putting out some really good I, plays I, overall. I like normalize's positioning with yeah. Resh. The way that he will put himself where he needs to be. He'll be like, all right, I'm between you. I'm going to throw a lantern backwards. Or he's like, all right, I'm going to get out. You stay there. I'll throw a lantern to you so you can follow me. And it saved Tails' life previously multiple times, actually. Yeah. Every time that they're getting ganked, he doesn't panic. And he makes the best of the situation via positioning on that thresh. So even though his score, he has two deaths, both times he's died were actually very valiant. Yeah, I feel like this would be a score for a number of times another dude didn't die because of me. And that score would be pretty high for normalize. Well, what would that be called? Like your undeath. Kill, your kills death. That's kills death assist and undeaths. Mm. It's not catchy at all. Kadwa, Kadao. At Elevel Esports, hashtag Challenger Series, what should it be called? The score for supports that make people not die. Like the person was almost at death, and you give them a shield and ah. Oh. See, there you go. She got to track it properly, but that's fine. That's, that's on us. I want to know the name. All I care about is the name. Okay. I don't care. Okay, okay. What's in a name? A rose would smell just as sweet, so would undeath. A rose by any other name? Yep. Got it going. Tails, playing the role of Romeo in this game. His normalized his Juliet. I, why not? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just coming up with random things at this point. Here we go. The mid lane push coming through. Not good for Duosec. Ulti's already down. Looks for damage on um, Chris, rather. Not going to find it here. Bottling turret's going to go down, though. VVV. Finding some good openings, though. Honestly, it hit six minutes. BBV started doing a whole lot better than Curse Academy. It's just Curse Academy's mid-late game shot calling. Their early game rotations are very good. Their playmaking is very good at that point, mm -hmm. and then it just gets out of hand. I gotta say, Get Snuggled is the guy I gotta point to mostly for mm -hmm. this. I think, yeah, he's got some deaths, but like, he has been going all out all the time and has five of his team's kills. Like, if Get Snuggled keeps doing well with the gold lead, got a Brutalizer to keep snowballing. It's on him a lot. I assume he's sitting on a little bit of gold, too, considering that he's only got the Lizard Elder Brutalizer. Five kills in his pocket. It's a low CS game for the Exactly, team. exactly. But... 3-1-4 and four for Pat as well, actually. 100% kill participation. Yeah. He's actually been all around the place. Like, I feel like Get Snuggled's getting a lot of credit he's getting killing blows. But, like, Pat's been playing exceptionally well. Only one death, actually transitioning into early tankiness. Uh, when, I got, when I got the talks to Dexter... Uh, earlier today, he was like, yeah, he should pick up the Hex Drinker. Um, maybe not so much this matchup, only one magic damage dealer. Um, but like, yeah, you pick up another offensive item and you just kind of go crazy on people. Um, Pat, by the way, maxing W second. I wasn't crazy, Internet, for talking <laughs> about it. Were, were you getting flack for that? Yeah, I was. Uh. And I was like, but people are doing that. Like, what do you want me to say? Dexter, I mean, I trust Dexter to be fair. He's an amazing player. Well, he said he said it was uh, preference. Yeah. Which it really is, and it's really matchup, too. It's how much you want to clear the jungle, how much you want to come out of the jungle healthy, and how much you want to save people. Versus take all the kills for yourself. And especially since something like a pit comp here with Get Snuggled, the Kha'Zix, and the LeBlanc, the shield is a good idea, because you come out of the jungle, you're like, here, hand towels, and then they're safe. Hand towels. I love wow. that. It just looks like hand towels when you safeguard somebody. Is that, only, is that only with... Um with the default? With, uh, no, pool party leads in. No. No, I don't even think there are hand towels when you do pool party. Well, no, but that's the one that would make sense to me. I think they're all the same. Okay, well, you we'll know what? See, though. That's not even thematic anymore. Let's get back to the game, though. Peek and Wolf and get snuggled. He has been looking for these, like, slow-paced ganks a lot. I mean, 60 CS at 20 minutes, working in brushes a lot. Like, get snuggled is doing his best Garen cosplay this game. <laughs> He's going to look for another opening here. I mean, Duo has been getting picked on as well. Two yes. deaths, like, I feel like doesn't do it justice because he's been getting so many ganks on his face. He needs a Juliet or a Romeo, somebody to save him. Mm -hmm. Not gotta, kill gotta, themselves with him, though. You gotta pick a different <laughs> play at this point. Romeo and Juliet's already been spoken for. All right. He, he needs, needs, a a needs a Lady Macbeth. There you oh, go. You he saw that. Sec. There's the chump on in. The slows are there. There's the ulti. Pat showing up for the assist. Can they make it happen? Nah, -uh. Duosec goes down. Pat a little bit alone now. Can he make this fight happen? Gets snuggled, kicked in the back of the head, trying to get out. Burning. Burns to death. Picks up the kill. There's a juke from LeBlanc, but not going to happen. Peek and Wolf gives the kill to Rox. Nice choice right there. But here comes VVD on the backside. Hook flashed what away. And here comes Kevin on the backside. Normalized puts down the box. Going to get three people slowed. Four walls broken now. Flashes over. Survives. Pat flash Q. 
Not going to fight Tails. What a turnaround by CA. So, Pat, it's all about him right now from start to finish. 100% kill participation still. Uh-oh. 505. Oh! He's going for it. Rank 1E. Oh, little bit of the slow. rep up on Tails. Jump. Jump to the ward. He's got a shield. He's got the flash. He's got a shield. The hand towel. Uh, oh! oh! Hand towels <laughs> broken down with bullets. Tails picks it up. A little bit too aggressive there. All right, we're going to look at that again. Get Snuggle comes in for Duo Psych. He makes himself invulnerable. The Pat was off on the side. He realized it. He was like, I'll be your Lady Macbeth. Comes straight in. Takes him out and then gets the kick. Get Snuggle is burning right now from the red buff. Get, gets dropped. He goes after the clone there. And they let Rux take it. He's able to close the distance, just throw an overload out. And then not even able to finish that because they're getting surrounded here. <laughs> they're trying again. Bloodthirsty game. Stun on the Capagon to jump in towards Rux as well. Get Snuggle is going to separate the team. Cavagon's got nowhere to go, sits in the menu wave, but not gonna matter. Get Snuggled, 6, 4, and 1 now this game. I like that Blood Get Snuggled went straight for Rux to force him out mm -hmm. and leave Cavagon completely isolated. So if he had jumped on the Cavagon, possibly would have given Rux a chance to just turn it around and do some yeah. extra damage. It's a good choice there. Isolating the targets, talk to Crumbs about that with Kazu. We agree. And the jump positioning. Very good. quite nicely. Now normalizing Tails. The rest of BVV gonna show up, smite. Not required. Uses it, but goes over to Caitlyn anyway. VVV, 2,000 gold lead in a 22-minute game so far. 3-3 three to three in turrets. Very close in kills. Standing We're at a close game right here. Standing on a ward. They'll, they'll see it in a second. They're like, oh, we, we were seeing all along. Ward corpse. Should have seen it. It's okay. I guess Snuggle's going to chill here anyway. They're going to look for the mid lane right now. See if they get anything out of this one. Four members defending. Looks like... Four members attacking, so it's going to be a stalemate here. See what these guys go for next right now. We see, of course, dragons off the map. Baron, really not possible this early in this close of a game. Unless you get, like, the miracle sneak, which is super hard to do. So let's see what the teams actually look for when they choose to go aggressive again. Because you got to remember, you've got a Renekton on one side and a Rise on the other. One of these has a better future late game. And it's the one with less syllables. Wreck. No. Still two syllables, wreck. still more than rise. There you go. It's that was wreck. a test, you passed. It's wreck. Wrecked. Nope. Wrecknectin. Wrecknectin is a good name. It's when he starts wrecking people. Yep. That's how it works. Angsty crocodile. Yeah, Rise is gonna go ahead and scale up. Like always, he's finished his Archangel's staff. He's got his glacial shroud. Mm-hmm. Lots of mana, lots of damage that is converted for him. And the tankiness that he's going to be accumulating here is very good up against the team of VVV. Yeah. He's to get burst out. Kha'Zix, we saw it earlier, like, gets snuggled when he went on to Pat. He's like, wow, this guy's a lot tankier than I thought he was. At least in going for the defensive build. Second, really took him off guard in that fight. Because so you're Kha'Zix, you're like, I'm just going to rip you apart, and I'm not. Yep. So he immediately finishes his Black Cleaver after that. Says, all right, they're building all this armor. I need to just chop through it very quickly and set up my team for success. Let's see what they can find. Because right now, Get Snuggled is waiting to set up Chris for success here in the top lane. Rux is waiting around in the wings. Does have a defensive pink ward in his tri brush. Get Snuggled. Shows himself. See if they pull any rotations. Pat and Mashmi are nearby. Well, he flashed. Get Snuggled just flashed. Yeah, he did. Uh, unintentional, I'm guessing. Well, I guess I would flash. It was intentional. It. it was the intimidation. He's like, I don't have flash. Come at me, bro. I don't need it. Just proving his power right here. Chris about to face check into Mashby. Mashby does want this fight a little bit. Does some damage. Backs off. Blue Trinket used by Mashby. Shows that uh, they are, in fact, running away. He is safe. Now the Wraith camp under attack. Gets snuggled. Gonna go for the steal. Gets it. See, you don't need flash for that. Nope. Leaps so far with those evolved wings. All right, so the mid lane siege continues. Caitlyn dealing some great damage here, Tails. Hook on a pat as well. A little bit of damage, not too much. The team's still defending Curse Academy. Going to eat a trap right there, but they're basically one way from losing this turret. Can Curse Academy turn aggressive? Still a 2,000 gold deficit. Let's see what they the, look for. Here's the thing, too. Duosec actually went for the Void Staff second because he saw how much magic resistance Chris was building and also will get through a little bit of that Athenes and Holy Grail that he can the bottom for some Good buy there. Also, he'll stack up his passive. And Pat, he's got a, he's got a good sonic wave there. Don't know if you want a resonating strike that, that one. Could have been right on top of Thrash and got flayed away. Could have kicked somebody into his team, though. I don't think you could if you get flayed in the middle of it. No. 
think Normalize is actually a good enough player to pull that one off. Seems to be an exceptional player. Yeah. So, yeah, I trust Normalize in that one to uh, press E at any point during like that half second it would get the room for. So let's see what we got. Mid lane still the focus of attention. Still the wave. We're coming in from Tails. No big deal. Capcom looks for the engage. Stun's going to go off and down goes wow. Normalize right away. In comes Get Snuggled. Can they find much more? Do a second in the back line. Pop us the ulti on Annie as well. Get Snuggled now. Running away in the front lines. Peeking off the a clone out just to tank some more damage. Kamigon jumps in. Chris picks up the kill. The re engage Rux low on health. Peeking doesn't quite find much more. Looks like a one for one overall trading supports. Nash, you're not going to find much more here. He can still off on the side. They know where he is. Ward's going to be able to show him. Wow, just on the overall there. Normalize got destroyed. So quickly. Talk about him being an exceptional player. He's also exceptionally tasty because they just cooked him up. Yep. He's gone. Um, nom, nom, nom. Just broken down to just his soul. Went to his lantern. But he's respawned now. He's going to be okay. Crazy fight. Look at this. Just. Oh, oh, where's Normalize? Yes. I don't know. You just saw him take about 200 damage and then the rest of it was gone. And so what happens here is we see Get Snuggled tries to go in, tries to finish something, doesn't happen. And Rux is focused on Tails, and they're like, all right, we should probably get Tails to try to chase him out. Chris says, I have to get something. Go straight for Cabigon. And Pat actually couldn't follow up that Sonic Wave into the Resonating Strike on Tails, because he was zoned out by Peek and Wolf on the right side. Yeah, it was cool. It was like an offensive support move. Peek and Wolf's like, if you dive him, you'll die. And he gives room for Chris to get out, because Chris went super hard to pick up that kill. Yeah, I like that, where they were just trying to get back, and it's like, all right, we have to push them back in order for us to get back because of the aggressive move of Chris. Mm -hmm. This is very pretty much just jumped in there. Wild card! What's going to happen? Wild card! Made it happen. Mid turret goes down. Four to three now. Still a 2,000 gold lead, actually. Looks like VVV holding pretty steady. 30 seconds until Dragon comes back up. VVV already in position. A bit early, though. Yeah, it is a bit early, but they could catch somebody out on their way there, which is the perfect position to set yourself up for, set yourself up for a Dragon. They see Kale there. They see Rock. Keep Rocks. and Wolf. Keep going to jump away. But now Chris Academy put some wards down. They know about this. They know Drag is not Chris yet up, but they know the it's close. Chris is on the outside of them, so he could pinch mm -hmm. them in. Or if BB. he gets hot. But here's the Ascension out of the pit. They're looking. Oh, the mid lane's getting started by Chris Academy. VVV has to pinch this or oh. navigate properly. Chris's jump is down. He's going to go back around behind the turret. Chris Academy hook onto Pat. They might follow up a little bit of damage on this one, but this turret down below half HP. Chris looking aggressive. Rune Prison to the face. Good damage comes down onto him. Hook, oh. jump, ooh, not quite for normalized peak, and Wolf shows up for rocks. Half HP. There's a lot of damage there on that tier 2 turret by Curse Academy. They had the inner track to that. And now Dragon is still alive. Curse actually, uh, Chris, he's up in the front line. Rux, on the other hand, he's going to split push. He has his TP available to him, so he's going to back. I wouldn't be surprised if we buy something like Home Guard so we can TP into the fight. There it is, boom. Immediately buys the home guard, All right. TP into the fight, and just runs straight at somebody extremely quickly. He's going to try. He's there on the side. Tails takes a bunch of damage off on the side. Chris chasing down. Normalize goes down on the other side of the fight, and Dragon, I believe, is still alive. Now, do a sec. Takes a bit of pain. These are going to be all right in the back lines. Curse Academy finds the one for zero, though, and stops Dragon. Oh, but gets Snuggles in trouble if they get him. He's invisible, but he's going to be going down. Kill picked up again for Mashmi. 13 to 13 now the score. Curse Academy turning it back. And here's the situation Curse Academy is in. They already got that turret to half HP. Why not finish it and then go get Dragon afterwards? More gold, more money in the bank, more of a lead. Like you said, turn your money into more money. There you go. It has suddenly multiplied and become more cash dollars. 300 gold lead now, Curse Academy. Getting their first taste of a lead since the first 10 minutes of the game. Looking now actually for the top lane, interestingly enough, using the Death Timers to go for this pressure. He can move his around, though. Not going to allow them to push, but Mashmi is starting up the Dragon. And then there's a huge wave bottom right now that nobody from VVV is actually answering for. Instead, they're looking for these kills up top, looking to chase them out. But did Didn't want it. Not worth it? Not hungry enough. Hmm. He's 204. He's well enough that doesn't need wards to add to it. Petswell got, uh, got to him and said, hey, could you stop this? <laughs> and uh, Chris is a conscientious man. He, he declined this time around. But in the top lane, Duo Sex actually not in the best spot right now, getting surrounded on by Thrash and Kha'Zix. Not the best spot for Duo Sex. Tries to look for Normalize. Gets the kill during the invulnerability. Now, can he get away from Chris? Haste himself out. Finds a Cabagon. Oh. Uh-oh, Chris, you bet off more than you can chew. Never mind. Spits it out. He's fine. And VVV looked like they don't want to follow that one up either. Normalize his box. Wasn't used. I think it was down for a couple more seconds after that. But... 
just a bad position, and the damage that Duo Set can actually deal is immense. Yeah. He didn't go for a Lich Bane just yet. He's going to complete his Rabidon's Death Cap when he backs, and then he's going to be just such destructive Kale right now. And mm -hmm. the Rabidons will add more damage to his auto attacks and then yeah. his tooth. Exactly. He's actually more auto attack focused now. Yes. As opposed to being a caster. And Lich Bane with the nerfs in 4.4. Yeah. He opts not to go for that. Something we would typically see as a last item. He might go for a defensive mm -hmm. item like a Zonia's after. It's really up to him. There's so yeah. many builds here. It's still, it's still strong. And the interesting thing is Lich Bane is actually comparatively a better first item. Because yeah. it's comparatively worse late, so we're going to get it at all. It's a little bit better early on. But of course, really wants the Nashor's Tooth and then just kind of scales into just more AP. And, and I like it. I think it's a good build. I don't think it's wrong to skip no. on Lich Bane for now. Not at all. See if he picks it up later. I like that. And we actually see Rux and Top Lane picking up both resistances, the Spectre's Cow and the Glacial Shroud, mm -hmm. before completing either of them into a Frozen Heart or Spirit Visage. I think that's wise. Depending on what he wants, yes. Be tanky, as, be as tanky as possible, because what's really going to stop you from doing your damage is if you're dead. Yeah. And that stops you from being dead. Yes. So Rise's spells are on a low enough cooldown that you'll just spell single them out. His passive will allow his cooldowns to be even quicker, yeah. depending on how much you sling out. We'll be in a good spot overall. So we're going to see just some wave clear from Mash that can't stay for too long. There's no wards in the bottom side of the map. Didn't know if he's going to get pushed on or not. Only saw a few faces in the mid lane. Confident to be safe with this one. Do a second to grab blue buff for himself. Plenty of CDR in this champion. Did run magic with his glyphs. Just saw the 42 right there and it was like the meaning of life and the MR you have if you run MR glyphs on a non-scaling champion. Keep himself okay against Peking Wolf. And to be fair, like, Duosec did win the lane. Like, we haven't talked about him very much this game, I feel like. We've talked about his build, but not his play necessarily. And I feel like Duosec, he won the lane against Peking Wolf, right? The the plan to ban out the mid laner of VVV worked because Duosec won the lane. Yes. Got ahead in CS, got ahead in level 16 to 15 right now, for example, and is starting to convert now in fights. 2, 3, and 5 is an all right score, but his damage is there. He's ready to deal a whole bunch of pain in team fights. So I think, yeah. That, that switch worked out. And of course, remember that, that Curse Academy also, he's a replacement mid laner for um, only Jaximus as of this split. So uh, still a little bit new to the team, but playing quite well. Yeah, he has a much more orthodox champion pool yeah. than only Jaximus, which I think is actually very beneficial to Curse Academy. And their new roster looks extremely strong. VVV kind of combined their rosters. And they're like, oh, we'll bring Chris over, we'll bring Tails over, and then get snuggled, he can go move from top to jungle, and we'll add in Peek and Wolf and normalize. Yeah, it looks well-rounded to me. Yeah, and you can see these teams putting on good performances. You can see both teams. There's no, like, obvious weak points, right? It's not like some of the games we've seen where it's like, man, their jungler's not keeping up. He's letting their, he's letting their lanes down. Oh, this guy's super inconsistent. He's gonna, you know, be dead weight a lot of the time. Like, right now, these guys, like, just across the board, everyone's putting up positive KDAs, making some plays. Normalize is getting caught out, but I think he's making good plays. Duosec does so much damage with his auto attacks. <laughs> Might as well pick up goal. 25. Oh. It's good. It's good. Yeah, so right. Peking Wolf was hanging off on the side there. He wanted to do some damage to Duosec. At this point, it doesn't look like he can actually duel him and burst him out. He would have to just get a perfect DFG and a perfect combo with the silence. It's incredibly hard it to... Extremely difficult. I like yeah. the counter pick from Duo Sec from the start. Absolutely. And now he's able to split much faster than LeBlanc's able to split. LeBlanc's kind of a pick champion and then can't push turrets herself. Mm -hmm. Whereas Kale can do both of those things. Yeah. If she's like left alone, she can keep hitting them. Mm -hmm. And like the way that LeBlanc would push a turret is just by being like, if you show up, I'll kill you. Yeah. Cavagon looks for the single target stun on Chris, does find it. Three members Nothing of EVV are actually going for Duo Sec right now. He's recalling out of the brush. Gotta be careful. Possible arm. He's good. He's fine. Yeah, it, nothing's happening from Tails and Normalize right now. They're starting to move. There's no ward here for Duosec, which is the big thing. He has no idea where Tails and Normalize are. And that three man strong in the bottom lane just spread them a little thin. Could have been yeah. very bad for them. Curse Academy taking advantage of it. Okay, so the next spike in things happening is going to be about 25 seconds when Dragon comes back up. The gold lead actually starts to 3k for Curse Academy. They are actually back in the driver's seat here. And VVV, I feel like 
I mean, I feel like they're playing like they're behind, so I think they know they're behind a little bit. And I want to know if they actually contest for Dragon or if they let Curse Academy continue to sort of accrue advantages. But if VVV lets that happen, I don't know how they get back in because Rux is just getting bigger and bigger. He's still got another item and a half to build up and then be unkillable on top of a high damage rise. That's true. And I talked about it earlier where Kale's passive is going to help rise and synergize with mm -hmm. that. So he just does even more in team fights. And on top of all of this, there's so much warding here for Curse Academy. The Sight Stone for Pat, also the Sight Stone for Kabagon, set them up in a Baron to know when it's going down. But right now, they're actually trading Baron for Dragon because Duo Sec and Rux aren't there. It's going to be Baron taking a whole bunch of pain. VVV putting the damage down. 2,000 health left on Baron. Pat shows up. He's going to get the smite. Curse Academy gets Baron. <laughs> but a trade kill back. Chris picks up the kill onto Annie. But the fight's still going on. Good damage in from Mash Me. Snuggle forced to jump away. Q's going to miss there from Pat. Rux looks for damage. The kill off finds it. Duo sec showing up, flashing over the wall to get the kill. The jump away gets Snuggle and Pika will both die. Two for one plus Baron. Curse Academy. So they pull off the Baron a little early. The hook onto Cabagon kind of baited them out of the pit. Yeah. So nobody was there to deal with Pat. It may have been a better idea to actually just keep normalizing the pit so he could lock up Pat when he tries to jump in. Maybe flay him so he doesn't make it all the way or throw a hook so he's stunned right during the, the uh, spike yeah. window. Exactly, yeah. But he opts to just try and peel off and go for Annie and they all try to converge on her. They do get the kill. But they lose the Baron in uh, Duosec. Duosec CC'd up. He's going to get the Kale ulti just in time. It's going to be enough to keep him alive. Another push in. Thresh going to go down. It's going to be Renekton and dying as well. Curse Academy. We're going to have another two for zero. Inhibitor is going to be going down. It's a very close game overall. But now Curse Academy just burst through the window. They're going for this inhibitor here. They have that late game scaling team. And there's not much Pika Wolf can do about this either. Mm -mm. Reserved to basically a B-list champion for him that he hasn't had fantastic success on. I said even in their victories, he was something like 4-4-1. Four, four, and one. Yeah. Go, having as many kills as deaths on LeBlanc. So just being very risky with that champion and not always getting the insta-burst rotation. Yeah. Well, same thing here. 3-3-5. Three, three, and five. Same kills as deaths. Peek and Wolf was a big factor for them earlier on. The flash away. People are trying to stay alive. Ah, Mashby's going to get that one. Pops the barrier just in case. Didn't need to, but it's okay. Three and a half completed offensive items for that man. Maybe the bottom lane farm as well for Rox, which easily kills off the minion waves. Double cannon minion wave. Still picked it up without much effort. He's two levels ahead of Chris right now. Incredibly scaled in the late game here for Rise. Has his Archangel staff, his Seraph's Embrace completed. Has the Banshee's Wheel, no longer grants mana. So, but he opts for that over the Spirit Visage, which is a good idea. He's already at max cooldown reduction. It's fine. But here's the thing. I want to jump down to our featured matchup. You see Tails is 2-1-6, and six, hasn't been giving up too many deaths. His mm -hmm. CS is on par with Mashmi, who's 6-2-5, and five, who was shut down a little bit in the early game. Yeah. So they have just been very consistent in their play, which is something I expected. But if either of them had gotten a huge edge over the other, then it was pretty much going to transition into this dominant late game. And we can see that a little bit here from Mashmi mm -hmm. with that build that he's got now because of all the gold he's accumulated for himself. Almost full build, almost unkillable at this point. Just so much burst damage. Well, the Banshee's Veil is going to fall off of Rux right now, thanks to a Q from Peek and Wolf. VVV on the defense right now. Can they find a way in? Duo Sex split pushing on the side, finds damage! Yep, that's a positive trade. Took a turret shot, still won it. Oh, it's good bait. damage! Pops the ulti! That means Peek and Wolf is now in kill range. Once the cooldowns come back up, Duo Sex got to heal himself back up to full. It won't take that long. If they don't make a move on him now, he'll be full in about two seconds. Or he'll just face take the turret. There you go, full health is going to be okay. Rux getting CC'd up. Do they have the damage? They've traded bottom and hip turret for this. Get snuggled. Evolve W does slow a bit more, I believe, if you evolve it in addition to the three shots. Gonna jump in maybe one more time. Gets a slow down again. Rux still trying to run away. His Seraph shield is down. Can't find the first kill. Finally comes through, but they lost bottom hip for one kill. A two on one, and he almost. T he it was very close to 2v1ing them. If he had killed Snuggled, then it would have just been a little bit of time where he could kite out Chris. But I like the play there from both of them having the Hex Drinkers. And Pat, he's over a trap! Oh, he gets the KO'd, he'll to stay alive. Actually waits around in range just for fun, but gets bursted afterwards! Oh, Look at the shade. damage coming through! Peek and Wolf normalize helping as well. There's another kill picked up, so VVV, they find some kills, but the problem is they've been losing their base. Chris is on base duty right now. Get him off the turret! You moved away! 
Uh, he stunned it. He stunned survive. it. Okay. okay, he's gonna keep that one alive. He's gonna regenerate. He can though, helping because Caster Minions were even doing some damage here. The double super minion waves are just so hard to deal with. Yeah. Even Especially. When, even when you're full build, they just buff each other. Yeah. They're big. Oh my gosh, the kills just keep getting found out of nowhere. Down goes Normalize. And honestly, I feel like he's starting to bite off more than he can shoot. Eight deaths on Thresh is more than you really expect. Yeah. He was looking good earlier in the game, and now he's just trying to make aggressive plays when they're behind. Mm -hmm. And we saw it when he first got picked off in that mid area where he threw out the hook. Then we saw it again in the Baron. Yeah. He went for Cabigon mm -hmm. instead of being on defensive duty. So he's very. He's kind of swapped himself over from being the Lantern guy yeah. to I'm going to try and make a play and get my team ahead, but it's not working out. It's actually putting them further behind. Yeah, and kind of speaking of guys who are also, I feel like, biting up more than they can chew, get snuggled. Started 5-3, and three, and has gone 6-6-3 six, six, and three afterwards. Hey, you know, very offensive build. Uh, grabbed a Hextrigger, finished um, Black Cleaver as well. But in the lack of tank guys, he's been dying a lot in these team fights. I don't know if we talked to, uh, uh -oh. actually, Peek and Wolf. Will not get the root. Kilty comes by, gonna do some good damage to Duo Sex, gonna go down. He can with the bait to find it, but mid lane under siege. Mashmi's found one kill. Now the battle gets snuggled. Can he make this one happen? Gets the slowdown. Puts the uh, Banshees off of Rux. What? Oh. He just didn't cast it. There we go. Q comes out. Rux rooted up box. Not going to land onto anything, though. Chris now in the front lines finds major damage and a giant crit from Tails. Kills off Cabagon. They're now picking Pat them off one on picked one. off as well. Exactly. The pickoffs one at a time. BBV clawing their way in with kills, but minions are worthwhile, too. Their two strongest members are still up. It's Mash Me and Rux. Rux is going to get away from this with that bonus movement speed from Desperate Power. Uh -oh. But Chris is off on the side. Banshee's Veil is back available. He's going to take so much damage Good here. Good rune, Chris. He's going to jump in for Mash Me. Finds the stun. In comes Get Snuggled. Ooh. Mash Me goes down. Now, Rux, what can you do? Red Roots buff. up Tails. The jump in from Get Snuggled. Some good damage. Chris waiting in the wings. Can't go in, of course. The chase is still it. in. There's a Seraph Shield kill comes wow. through. Trades the kill back, but worth it for BBV. They end up getting an ace all the way from their base to this bottom tier two. But their base is under siege right now. They're losing turrets. They're losing stuff to the minions right now. You can see bottom in Nexus turret just Oof. barely surviving to the respawns. Look at that top turret. That top turret's at about two thirds. It was like at 300 health not long ago. Those things regen pretty quickly. So VVV put themselves back in a great situation. They showed that Curse Academy, once they lose duo sec, they're very easy to pick off after that because he's their most sustained damage right now. Mm -hmm. In, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Tails is actually going to try to blow this up. Oh! Yep. Tails crit it for 800, yeah. which put it right in range for the KL auto attack. Tails was trying to EQ out the last hit, but the crit betrayed him. Sometimes you just don't want the crit. Apparently not. And the thing is, you're likely to get it. He has 55% crit chance in his build. And then you got to be like, okay, if I'm going to crit this, let me get it to like 600 health. Calculate. You got to. Do the numbers. Crunch the numbers. You gotta do, do it, Tails. You got to try. You got to try. It didn't work out that time. It's a happy man of this one. And now we see Baron's back up. Dragon off the field. VVV still down. Their bottom inhibitor respawned. So now... They have all their inhibs, they have no turrets. Bad situation for them. Because Baron is going to be contested very shortly, but at the same time, they can't get stuck between Baron and their base, or else Curse Academy will end the game by pushing and shoving. Duosec has so much damage to buildings and structures in his build, his auto attacks, the fact that he can just decimate them. It would take seconds for Curse Academy to just barrel down the base. So they're gonna set up for Baron, put themselves in a situation to do it, and if VVV answers, there's really almost two, like two possible contingencies where yeah. they could stop that. That's it. Where there's so many ways that Curse Academy could come out on top. Absolutely. So we'll see if Curse Academy can make those happen. The ball is in their court. Absolutely. They're the ones able to make plays. Only the Nexus turrets remain to fight against champions and minions in VVV's base. Curse Academy setting up Baron right now. They've got decent pink ward, pink ward coverage. They get spotted, spotted by the blue trinket, upgraded blue trinket. So Tails knows all about this. And it does not break Banshee's fail. Does not break Banshee's fail. I had to ask that one, but it's going to be the case. Chris taking some good pain, but a lot goes back out of Cabagon. 
Gonna jump in there, Pikmin will break some Banshee's Veil. More poke, honestly. Yes. I know why I like a yes. Snuggled W. The Banshee's Veils. Yep. He's really good at breaking Banshee's Veils. That's exactly why he did it. It'll also apply his Black Cleaver to everybody he hits, setting up Tails a little bit better. And I mean, it's team fighting. How often are they going to be isolated? You still get the missing HP on your mm -hmm. Q when you fall, but at the same time. He's setting up his teammates more than playing for himself. 7-7-7 seven, seven, seven now his score. Lucky man here going in. The Bear going to be started up for Curse Academy, and all of VVV pushed away with this one. It's going to be an uncontested Baron pick up there. Oh, they're going to hide in it too. No way. And wait for somebody? The thing is, look how deep their ward coverage is. They, they, they know no one's even trying. No one would actually connect Baron at this point. No, they, VVV knows it's gone. If they, yeah. they're anywhere in their right mind, they're like, okay, that was five seconds. The Baron's gone by now. Yep. I mean, it was a cute idea. Like, I can't fault C8 for no, trying. No. They didn't lose anything to yes. make that play. So it was like zero risk, tiny chance of reward. But it'd be a big reward if they got it. Yeah. If one person was like, oh, we got a reward Baron. <laughs> and then, oh, that's it. Yeah. So right now, Curse Academy in a great situation to end the game. But at the same time, we saw how it went last time when Duosec was away from the team. So now, basically saying, that's not going to happen again. I'll just stay with you guys. He has his Zonias completed. Full build. So even if... He uses his ultimate on somebody else or on himself. He can zone use immediately afterwards and save his own HPs. Yeah. I like that choice. Just self zone use if you see it coming in. Save your ulti for a teammate. So you can find that. Curse Academy rotate to the top lane there. Oh, uh, they're back during the inhibitor because why not? Doesn't get a bonus for that one. One hit to go. They don't find the inhibitor kill just yet. Giving respect to VVV's lineup there. Pushing forward there. They go pick it up. Cabagon, though, not in a good spot. Takes the Kale ulti because he ate a cupcake. That's go time for them. And he's appetite. A little bit too big for himself. The flash in the shield from Lee Sin. Ooh. They don't find the kill just barely. And Cabagon actually saved his Mikhail's the whole time. He had faith he's going to live. It's a lot of faith. I think would have been one of the situations where he used his Talisman of Ascension. We've just been like, why not? Yeah, why of course. Use, use the Mikhail's on myself. Save me. Meanwhile, down in the bottom, that inhibitor turret was taking some pressure for Curse Academy. It'll regen itself back up. There's some mini waves just throwing themselves against it. Suicidal, we gotta get the turret. Mm -hmm. Help VVV, help our team out. At the same time, VVV, once everybody reaches full build, which everybody's pretty much about one or two items off, yeah. Chris is a little bit behind. A lot behind Rux, actually, in that regard. Yeah. I'm impressed that he's still 4 1 and 7. Yes. When your team has 21 deaths and you're a champion that traditionally falls off late game, like Renekton, and you have, you're like your only real frontliner for the team, only died once. It's really impressive for Chris. Yeah, he's been getting a lot of help. Every time he jumps in, somebody's there to zone for him yeah. afterwards on the retreat. Yeah. So Chris has been playing extremely well. The problem is that his jungler gets snuggled, who was having a great game at first, mm -hmm. been falling off and normalized too. The game kind of blew up into yeah. this big gold lead for Curse Academy. It did. Now 9,000 gold. And with that, they bought a Death Fire Grasp on Cabagon's Annie. So he's going to be there to really make sure that people die when Ryze and Kim start hitting him. Yeah, because it will amplify everybody's damage to it. Yep. Not just his own. Not just his. So a lot of damage items available for these guys. Looks like Curse Academy now look for the bottom lane. Top and hip is dead. He's going to pull attention the rest of this game. Well, the next two minutes or so. Close to the same thing. All these Banshees veils. Get on it. Get snuggled. He's going to snuggle them with his Void Spikes. KQ. Ooh, nicely dodged there. Peek and Wolf shows up. Not quite going to land it. Snuggle not going to break any Banshees either. Tails forced out. Peek and Wolf low as well. Good ulti from Mashmi. And down goes inhibitor number two. Rotate towards the mid lane. Can they get number three on this one? Rux doing some good early damage to Chris. Down to half. Honestly, the initial poke from Curse Academy. Very, very strong hook on a pat. He's going to jump back. Three and Hib's dead now. Now, a good start for Curse Academy. Curse Academy are systematically pulling them apart, getting these inhibitors, waiting for the super minions. They are stronger in terms of items and everything else. Now they're just waiting for that guaranteed win and guaranteed push. Because at this point, yep. even if they get aced, VVV will have to deal with all the super minions pouring into their base. Yes, they will. VVV not likely to get anything off of a team fight when except just some golden XP from minions. So they're all almost level 18 at this point anyway. Curse Academy waiting in the mid lane until Super Minions show up. Should be the next wave coming down the pipe. Top lane did have Supers. There come. Ooh. Looks for Rux. Doesn't find it. Let's see what else we can find. Ooh. Good damage from Mashmi. Not going to land the hook. 
Crazy Academy just waiting for that one opening. Get themselves into this game. It's gotta be soon. It'll eventually reach the point where it's now or never, because each each lane will have double supers. Oh, Duosec pops ult on himself, snuggled, runs in there, takes a whole oh. bunch of damage, and down he goes to Pat. The fight into the back line, it's gonna go. Chris Academy backing up a little bit. Bach comes down the chase on Normalize, and he's gonna go down as well. Tails, not in the best spot, taking more pain, shut down right now by Mashmi. Only Peek and Wolf and Chris are live. It's going to be the game. Curse Academy in 51 minutes takes game one. Just, oh, Peek and Wolf picks up a kill for himself so he can say, I didn't go even in kills and deaths this game. 5 4 7. Rux TV zooming in, making it look stylish. Nice. Sweet new particles for that one. Yeah. It's all swirly and awesome. So, Curse Academy pull out game one. Yeah. First six minutes were really good, then VVV started coming out again. Mm -hmm. But then the fact that they picked this late game scaling team composition yeah. worked wonders for Curse Academy over VVV. That seemed to be the big saving grace too, because it and it took them so long to get back in. Right? Like for the next like twenty minutes or so, it was like a lot of great moves by VVV. I really gotta say those guys played a great game to bullet fifty one minutes after that start and against that kind of comp too. But then, yeah, it took them so long for Curse Academy to like sort of pick up the slack, get back into team fights, get Barons, and then even then, VVV kept fighting it. Even then, VVV went in there, found picks. You talked about the ace they got that started in their base, ended in the opponent's base. Just so many attempts there in a close game from VVV. Yeah, and Curse Academy really put up a big fight in the middle. VVV, you know, they were down 10k gold for a very long time, and they didn't give up. Yeah. You know, but I would like to see Peek and Wolf on something else other than LeBlanc. Yeah, his performance on that has not been very convincing to me. Yeah, his poke champions, and you could tell right there at the end, if he was on a poke champion, then he could have stopped some objective sieging. And the way that VVV was grouped up, and the way that they would play, yeah. was kind of like I would love to see a poke champion there. Yeah, because Chris like goes in when everybody's half HP. Like you just set up more opportunities like that with a poke comp. So yeah. even something like a Gragas would have been, yeah, effective in a way. Yeah, I could see that. I could see something, you know, a little bit more long range. And yeah. honestly, yeah, I think you're right. The LeBlanc didn't quite work out, of course. Good job on Duosec to win that lane. Had yeah. the push lead, had a CS lead, did a lot in fights. And i got to say, generally speaking, some pretty good kill interventions. Yeah, Curse Academy's composition, mm -hmm. when they were formulating it as a counter to VVV's comp, because they had the Renekton and, Kale, uh, Renekton and LeBlanc already shown, they were like, all right, we'll pick Ryze and Kale into that, who will win both of those lanes and scale into the late game harder yeah. than those champions. Yeah. So you're looking to win lane, we're looking to win the game. And, of course, they did win the game. Proves that just because it rhymes doesn't mean it's always the way that it works. The guy's going to dash to a quick commercial break, but we're going to come back with Game 2 between Curse Academy and BBB Gaming. Stick around. We've got more Challenger action after this.